Welcome to EDN's evaluation of the Icologic Icoscope. It's a pen-based oscilloscope uses Wi-Fi to connect to either an iOS device or an Android device or PC. I'm using an iPad 2, which I'm very happy about that they do support the iPad 2. Um, I've used other scopes like this uh, that did not support the iPad 2. So that's that's something it's got going in its favor. A micro USB for charging only and two LEDs. The LEDs are used for giving you status to tell you when it's searching for Wi-Fi, when it's connected to Wi-Fi, when it's actually acquiring data. So the first thing we have to do is get it to connect. And right now it is not connected. It's not even seeing it because it's turned off. So the way you do that is I'm going to push down on the probe pin. Just give it a little push and then release it. And you can feel a little switch. So you heard a little beep. And now you can see the blue LED is flashing. So it's now looking for something to connect to. And that should come up right over here. And it hasn't yet. It may take a moment. There we go. It should be trying to find it. Okay, the Icoscope, you can see the blue LED flashing. It's looking for something to connect to. And here, here it is appearing, appearing on my iPad. So I'm going to touch that and that should get it to connect. There we go. It's connected. So let's go to the app. And you get, you know, what you'd expect. Your basic grid. And let me just take you through this. There's uh, volts per division, time per division. There's a trigger over here, which we can slide up and down. We've got some measurements and we've got cursors. Let's just turn those on for a moment so you can see them. Let's turn it off again. So now let's start to acquire. The way you do that is you have to push down on the pin, the little pin here. You have to push down and hold and apply pressure. So I'm going to do that on this little signal over here, which says analog. And you hear a little beep. And let's turn off the cursors. And let's try auto set and see if it can find the signal. I have found that it seems to lose the connection if you don't use it right away and keep using it. Okay, now let's go look at that signal. So I'm going to put my probe on here. You notice when I touch it, it does nothing. You've got to apply a little pressure. And now you should see that flashing. The auto set is working. Let's see if it can find this signal. I can tell that it's connected up here. Oh, there we go. We've got something. Not what I would expect from an auto set. It's obviously found the signal, but it doesn't seem to be uh, triggering on it. Let's see if we can apply a trigger. See if that'll get it to trigger. And I would have expected it to be a little better. So let's decrease the time base a bit. Bring it down and see what we have. That's, there we go. That's what I expected to see is a sine wave. And I'm going to move the trigger. There we go. Now we're getting a stable trigger. It's a bit noisy signal. And you can see this blue line right here indicates the trigger point. Now, let's see what we've got. So we've got a setting down here, 2 volts per division, 20 milliseconds per division. Let's see what let's see what else we can do. Okay, so there we can change the time per division. Let's change it to uh, one volt per division, just so you can see the signal. There it is, and you can just drag the whole thing with your finger, move the signal around as needed. So I can change the time base, the voltage. There's the time base. This should highlight which setting it's on. I don't know, so I have to go back to here. 20 milliseconds per division. So let's say. I go to 50 milliseconds per division there. And I think that's something that the software needs to deal with. When I go to this setting, which one was I at? I don't know. Okay. So now we have some measurements that we can do. So let's look at it. It gives you 10 different measurements that you can use or that you can have on the screen. And here are some of the choices, V average, V peak, V RMS. So let's look at V peak to peak. Let's add that 3.35 volts. Let's add another one for VRMS. Two volts RMS. Let's get the frequency up there. 
It's a slow signal, 9.5 hertz. And let's look at something like the uh, period. Period, 105 milliseconds. Okay, so now let's see what those cursors can do. Let's bring the cursors up. I see A. I see there should be an A and B. I'm only seeing... Oh, there they are. There's A and B. And if I, move, I can move them, move them around a little bit. And you've got to move them from the little A and B flags at the top. So let's say if I set this to about one cycle, and it's now giving me the time between A and B and the positions of A and B. So I can see the A and B locations, which are over here. On this side, I'm seeing delta, which is 107 milliseconds, and that translates into a frequency of 9.37 hertz. I'm not, they're not perfectly aligned. Um, and if we hit this again, now we have voltage. So I again can look at, let's say I wanted to see the peak to peak voltage of here. And it's about 3.26 volts peak to peak. So now we're looking at a digital signal from this uh, demo board. And it came right up and is giving us it's a nice stable signal most of the time. And now we can, uh, say, apply those cursors again. This is the vertical. So let's see what we can get. Let's see if we can. Now we can use that to calculate a pulse width. So let's see if we can figure out what that pulse width is right there. 9.13 milliseconds translates to about 110 hertz. Let's go back to the measurements and see what it does now. Let's clear, let's clear out the ones that we're using. Uh, let's see if we can cancel. Let's see if we can clear out the ones that we were using. Let's get rid of them there. You can just delete them, just touch them and they delete there. Now, let's see what we get. Let's look at, say, let's start with something simple like the peak to peak. And it's giving us about 3.35 volts. All right, so let's look at our trigger options. So I'm still holding my probe on this pin. You can see it's still flashing. Let's see what we have, what kind of options we have for triggers. Well, we get the usual that you'd expect. Uh, auto, normal, single, trigger on rising edge, trigger on falling edge, trigger on both edges. So again, all this time... I've had to apply pressure to that probe, and my hand's getting a little tired at this point. Uh, what I have seen on others, competitors, is a button that you can use to hold so that you're not applying pressure, which I actually kind of like because in some cases like this, if you're applying pressure to a point, it's very easy to slip off. You'd really rather just touch it, but I can't do that. So as you can see, we're still getting, we are getting a live signal. Now, when I back off on that pressure, which I just did. I'm still touching it, but I backed off and I could feel a little, little, feel the switch change. And so now I'm looking at a stable signal.